Let's go. Let's go. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We're about to hit 100 subs. That means a lot. I put so much hard work into these videos. And I want to focus on one topic today that was brought up on my last chat sports video. What is Miles Brennan's stat line going to be next year? So go back to episode 10 when I called Miles Brennan an all-SEC quarterback. But when you actually discuss numbers, it gets a little tricky because I've seen all kinds of numbers thrown out there from Miles Brennan. I want you to think about Joe Burrow's first year as a starting quarterback. Not the 61 touchdowns, not the record-setting completion percentage, not the over 5,600 yards passing from last year, but the year before. And as you can see, the numbers were a lot worse than what I initially expected. 16 touchdown passes, 5 interceptions, and less than 3,000 yards passing. In fact, in 2018, 6 SEC quarterbacks, nearly half the league, threw for at least 3,000 yards and Joe Burrow didn't even reach that mark? What happened? Well, obviously, Joe Burrow got a lot better. The LSU offense became new. You go back and you see Joe Burrow had a four-game stretch where he didn't throw a touchdown pass. It is so hard to put up ridiculous stats as a first-year starting quarterback. These are LSU quarterbacks from the past in their first year as starters. This is just for reference. I know football was played differently then than it is now. But, as you could tell, Rohan Davey is the only quarterback to throw for over 3,000 yards. And Matt Mock is the only quarterback to throw for over 25 TDs. And both of those guys were seniors. You could tell by the completion percentages, it's really hard. It's really, really hard to play quarterback in the SEC even with LSU's great receivers, the defenses on LSU schedules year in and year out are the toughest in the country. So after seeing those stats and seeing what SEC quarterbacks have done, I consider a ridiculous year in the SEC, a 13-game schedule, to be 30 touchdown passes and over 3,500 yards passing. So, since 2017, the 30 touchdown club is a pretty exclusive one. Drew Locke, Tua Tagovailoa twice, and Joe Burrow, and some guy who called himself elite, Jake Fromm. Elite, Jake Fromm. And then the passing yards is pretty much the same list, but instead of Jake Fromm, it is Jordan Tahamu. So, as you can tell, it is hard very, 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 very hard to reach those numbers. 30 touchdowns and 3,500 yards passing. It gets even harder if you are a first-year starting quarterback. Since 2009, only four first-year starters have thrown for at least 30 touchdown passes. And then for 3,500-yard passers, the list is a little bit longer for first-year starters, but nevertheless... He can still be very good without throwing for those numbers or reaching those benchmarks, however you want to put it. We talked about this in episode 10. You don't have to put up those ridiculous numbers to be a very good quarterback in the SEC. In fact, I think Miles Brennan will be first team or second team all SEC next year. First thing, I don't think offenses are going to be as good next year in college football because of everything that's going on. Offense is about timing and chemistry and practice, and who knows if we're even going to have any of that going into next season. But with Miles Brennan, this gives him a leg up on most of the SEC because he's been throwing to Racy McMath, he's been throwing to Jamar and, and Terrace over the past few years. And Steve Insminger has been his offensive coordinator pretty much the whole time. So when I see list like this on 247, where Miles Brennan is 13th, ranked 13th quarterback in the SEC, really? Felipe freaking Franks? 
And then I see Jamie Newman and KJ Costello. But Franks Costello and Newman are first-year starter transfers. They have no chemistry with their wide receivers at all. And then you have guys like Bo Nix and John Rice Pumley and, and Kellen Mond. What have they done that have blown you away so much to make you think they're going to be all SEC quarterbacks next year? So yeah, the question marks with Miles Brennan are there, but lack of experience, especially compared to guys going to new teams, shouldn't be as big of a deal or big of a setback as many people possibly think. As we brought up in episode 10, will Miles Brennan be able to run the ball as effectively as Joe Burrow? Also, what is Miles going to be like after he takes that first big hit? You never really know how a quarterback's going to react. And speaking of getting hit, what about the offensive line having to replace four out of five starters? And then, of course, there's the schedule. You have Texas in week two. And while Bama does come to Tiger Stadium, LSU does have to play Florida, A&M, and Auburn on the road. By the way, Auburn and A&M on the road in November final two weeks of the year. So if you are to expect Miles Brennan to put up gigantic numbers, it's going to have to come against the easier defenses early in the schedule. So this is how I see Miles Brennan's stat line for next year. 28 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, completion percentage at 65%, and I see him going over 3,000 yards, but not quite getting to 3,500. I think 3,200 is a pretty good mark for Miles. And I do think that'll be good enough for first or second team All-SEC. Once again, college football offenses next year aren't going to be as slick and as great as we're used to. So let me know what you think. In the comment section below, give me your Miles Brennan stat line for next year. Special shout out, as always, to Chat Sports. Go to carterthepower.com. You can see all of my videos there. And once again, subscribe. Check us out on Podbean. We deeply appreciate it. It's Power Hour LSU. Boom! Boom.